So it's been a little bit over a year and a half since this was released. This is the DJI Avada, which released back in August 2022. Now here we are in April 2024 and DJI has just released this one right here, the DJI Avada number two. And I'm super excited about this release, mainly because when the Avada one came out, I think a lot of people, including myself, just felt like this is the drone that DJI probably should have came out with first compared to the DJI FPV drone. That drone, while super awesome, was a little bit big, a little loud, a little heavy. And a lot of people like myself are transitioning over into FPV. And this one feels like a more natural progression coming from a Mini, an Air, a Mavic, and then trying to get into the FPV space. The Avada one, I think, is the one that a lot of people were really excited about if you're kind of moving over from a GPS drone or trying to get into FPV for the first time. Now with the Avada 2, you can really see that DJI went back to the drawing board and pretty much redesigned the entire drone. The way everything sits on the drone has been updated. The body, of course, all new. The whole propeller, propeller guards, the way the propellers sit on here. We will talk about all of those differences from the Avada 1 to the Avada 2 in this video, as well as, of course, talk about all of the new gear that comes with this set, depending on which one you get. We have all new batteries. We have a new remote control, new motion or RC motion, as well as new goggles, the Goggles 3. And for those that are familiar with my channel, you guys know I'll have a lot of in-depth, individual or separate videos going into a lot more detail of all this gear. In this video, I do wanna to talk to you about all of the new features of the Avada 2, talk to you about my experience flying it for the past few weeks. So let's just jump right into it. And as far as unboxing goes, I do have a separate unboxing and talking about all this gear here that I unboxed in the Flymore combo. And of course, first we'll talk about the new design of the Avada 2 versus the Avada 1. Right out of the way, you can see a little bit bigger of, than the Avada 1. The Avada 2 is a little bit wider, a little bit taller, not by much, but the one difference is the Avada 2 actually does weigh significantly less than the Avada 1. And putting them here on my home scale, so these aren't like DJI official weights, coming in at 416 grams for the Avada 1 and the Avada 2, 386 grams. Unfortunately, for those hoping that this would be an under 200 and 50 gram drone, it is not. Now the one thing you will notice once you put them side by side, it is a lot more streamlined on the Avada 2. It has a lower profile compared to the Avada 1. And for me, the bigger thing is that everything is enclosed on the Avada 2, which I really like. The one thing with the Avada 1 that I complained about in the beginning was once you take the battery out, everything, well, first of all, the battery is kind of hard to take out, but everything is open on the sides which means you just are a little bit more prone to getting dirt, dust, and debris all inside of the body here. And the battery slides in from the back and it does have this kind of cable here on the back, which was always a weird thing to have to plug in separately. You would slide it in this way and then plug in the cable. Comparing the battery from the Avada 1 to the Avada 2, we have a slide out battery, very similar to how we have it on all of the Air, the Mavics, even the Minis. It is encased in this plastic here, but it does slide right in and has those satisfying clips here on the side compared to this one where it never really felt like it was fully locked in. I've had a few crashes on the Avada 2 and the battery has yet to pop out, which is a good thing. The one thing I didn't think was weird is that they do have this red line here on the back where the battery, where you have to press it in. And I always think that the battery is not secure because whenever I see the red, I think that it's not clicked in or locked in. Kind of used to how the doors on the action cameras look on the DJI Action where if you see the red or orange line, that means it's not properly sealed or secured. So I always look at this and double check it, but it's actually just part of the button. It's not a locking feature to tell you that it is not actually secure. But overall, really happy with the new battery design. Like I said, just matches all of the other drones that they already currently have on the market. Next thing I noticed when it comes down to design, when you look at the Avada 1, you will see these arms come on the top of the drone and the propellers sit underneath the drone because the actual brackets and braces are here on top. Here on the Avada 2, it looks like they kind of flipped it. So now we have the arms below the propellers and the propeller guards. Next we'll talk about camera and camera sensors. We do have a 1 over 1.7 inch CMOS sensor on the Avada 1. Here on the Avada 2, a larger 1 over 1.3 inch 
CMOS sensor, very similar or same size as we have on the DJI Action 4, as well as the Mini 4 Pro and the Air 3. They have that one over 1.3 inch CMOS sensor camera. We have that now here on the Avada 2. We still have the 4K60 here, but we also now have the ability to shoot in 4K60 HDR on the Avada 2. The one thing I do like that they added here, we now have 10-bit D-Log-M compared to the d Cinelite that we had on the Avada 1. Definitely is a beneficial feature, especially if you're trying to mix and match some of your footage. Being able to shoot D-Log or D-Log-M in 10-bit and then match that up with some of your other action cameras or your other drone cameras. That way they're all using the same color mode. And jumping back to the battery, the one thing that's really nice about the Avada 2, we have longer flight time. That's definitely something that really hinders a lot of FPV pilots is the ability to fly a little bit longer, especially with drones from DJI, like the Mini 4 Pro, or actually all the Minis, and then the Air 3. We have such long flight times. We now have 23 minutes rated flight time on the Avada 2. Here on the Avada 1, only rated for about 18 minutes. Next, we'll talk about video transmission, and of course, bumped up specs again here on the Avada 2. Now here on the 2, we have the new O4 transmission. Here on the Avada 1, we had the O3 Plus transmission. And as far as distance, the Avada 1 was rated for 10 kilometers. Now we are rated for 13 kilometers on the Avada 2. We also have a slight bump up on the bit rate here. We have 60 megabits per second, where here on the Avada 1, we had only 50. Next, we'll talk about storage. And if you guys own the Avada 1, you guys know how frustrating it is to get to the USB-C port, which is actually in here, which is the prop guards. It was on the inside of the prop guard. You have to pull this flap down and then reach in and hopefully you don't mess up one of the props. I had to basically buy an L adapter just to plug in here because if you try to put in a cord, it just doesn't really work that well with the propellers in the way. So I was really happy about that because here on the Avada 2, they just had that at the very bottom. Now it's a little flap that opens up. You don't have this little door that could possibly hit the propellers like we had here. This makes transferring your footage off the drone really easy. Another good thing is we have 46 gigs of internal memory on the Avada 2. Here we have 20 gigs internal memory. It's happened way too many times when you're out there, you've downloaded footage, and then you throw the drone up in the air, come to find out there's no card in there. So having that backup internal, really nice feature, 46 gigs. Flipping the drones over, we actually do have a few sensors here on the bottom of the Avada 1. But what's nice is that on the Avada 2, we have vision sensors pointed at about a 45 degree angle here, which is able to now see behind the drone, as well as down below. We still have those landing sensors here on the very back. Next, we'll get into the flight experience with the Avada 2. And if you guys saw my video about the Avada 1, for me, I'm not a hardcore FPV pilot or flyer. I'm not kind of doing a lot of flips and maneuvers and all the acro movements. I normally like flying FPV 1 for just the immersive experience. It's a completely different way of flying when you're flying through goggles. And of course, I love the type of footage you get from an FPV drone compared to something like a Mini or an Air, where you normally have those drones that get nice kind of establishing shots. Here, you get a lot closer to the subject. You get a lot lower to the ground. You're able to fly in smaller, tighter areas with a drone like this, something that you don't normally do with a Mini or a traditional GPS drone. The great thing about the Avada 1 and now of course the Avada 2 is that if you are coming from, like myself, a GPS or a standard drone flyer, wanting to have that FPV experience, these drones are really good because out of the box, they're pretty much ready to go, ready to fly. And of course you have that DJI GPS technology where if you do feel a little uncomfortable up in the air, you can either let go of the sticks or you can hit the brakes here on the RC motion and the drone will sit and hover for you. The one thing I do like is that if you are an experienced FPV pilot and you can fly those types of maneuvers and you're really good at piloting the drone with the remote control, this drone is still able to do a lot of those maneuvers. Not as much as maybe some of the DIY type of custom builds. Now speaking of those a little bit more advanced features, doing flips and rolls on your drone, the Avada 2 now has a simple way to do that if you're using this right here, the new RC Motion 3. Now the joystick is a lot smaller than the Motion 2, but easily fits right in the middle of the palm of your hand and controlling a drone, super simple, just like the other motion controllers. Now if you do have the RC Motion 3, you are able to control the Avada 2, but what's cool is that they do have a section on the app 
which is called Easy Acro. When the drone is up in the air, you're able to now trigger a menu from the very top of the goggles, go into what they call Easy Acro mode. It now gives you three different options for you to maneuver your drone, bunch of dynamic movements you're able to make, just by flicking the joystick. Now the first maneuver is called slide. Now when the drone's up in the air and you're moving, you just move the joystick left and right. I did notice that when I did do slide for some reason, the drone really doesn't move that much. It just barely kind of creeps left to right. It was kind of odd. I wasn't sure if I'm missing something on it, but that's kind of what it did. It just kind of moved the drone just a little bit. Once you switch the easy acro menu to easy flip or easy roll, you are now able to easily move the drone forward just by pulling the trigger here. So it'll accelerate the drone. And while it's up in the air, all you have to do is if you want to do a front flip, you can actually just flick the joystick forward. You just flick the joystick up. There it is. And the drone will then go forward and flip just like that, and then continue going forward. Again, if you want to do backflip, flick that joystick down to backflip. And if you were to flick it left to right, the drone will actually go and roll left. Let's go ahead and do a roll. So I'm gonna roll left. And then let's go roll right by flicking it to the right. Now, one thing I did notice though, when you do the backflips and rolls, when you compare it to, I would say, a more traditional FPV drone, is that there was a little bit of a delay when it actually does the flip. So if you engage the flip, if your drone's going really, really fast, the drone will kind of slow down, do the flip, slow, and then it'll kind of pick back up speed. With a more traditional FPV drone where you would ideally maintain that speed, I hope that's something that we're able to change in some of the parameters or it might just be an update where we're able to maintain the speed a little bit more. Uh, hopefully that could just be an update uh, from DJI to fix some of those things. Again, that's an easy acro mode giving a beginner FPV pilot just the feeling of doing some of these maneuvers with this. Now, if you were to pilot the drone with your remote control, you are able to maintain the speed and perform all those maneuvers if you're more of an advanced pilot, you don't have that slowdown like you do here using the RC motion. The next easy acro mode that I actually really do like and I used a bunch of times is the 180 drift. Now to engage 180 drift, all you do is fly, of course, forward just by pulling the trigger and then flick it left or right, depending on which way you want the drone to drift. Now, once you flick it left, the drone will then turn 180 and it'll continue drifting backwards until you let go of the accelerator and then you pull it again and then it'll continue going back forward. So really cool option for you. So if you wanna go, which I did, I went under a pier, went under a bridge, a bunch of obstacles where you go through and it spins and now you're able to kind of reveal that obstacle or that landmark and then you're able to come right back through it. Again, another popular type of maneuver for a trained FPV pilot to do with a remote control, you are now able to do something very similar with the RC motion just by flicking that joystick left to right. Again, cool features for beginner FPV pilots to not only have that immersive experience using goggles and a RC motion controller, but to also get some dynamic movement in there, some of that acro feel that you would normally have to do with a remote control. Now, of course, in order for you to have this experience, you need to be able to see what the drone sees. And you are able to do that with these all new DJI Goggles 3. Now, as far as form factor goes, if you're familiar with the Goggles 2 or the Goggles Integra, I like that they kept this right here, which is the built-in battery. You don't have to have the battery dangling or the cable dangling from your goggles to a battery that sits in your pocket. We have the integrated battery here where you're also able to adjust the strap around your head. Now, when I first saw the goggles, I was like, oh, they added some like huge antenna <laughs> on top of the goggles, but it's actually not. It's just a pad that takes all of the pressure away from your eyes because normally on the goggles Integra and the version two, you would have to actually have thicker foam and padding here on the inside. And then when you want to tighten your goggles down, you would be clamping down all of that pressure around here around your face, around your eyes, where now all of that pressure is relieved here on the very top of the goggles. This sits on your head so much better, a lot more comfortable because you're now just kind of resting the goggles here on your forehead and the 
light leak is limited here on the inside because now we have this rubber piece that sticks out and this is really just to eliminate the light leaks that you would normally get. I really like the new design. It's a lot more comfortable when sitting on your head, especially for a long time. And the great thing about this battery, it's actually rated for up to three hours of flight time. Now some of the new features as far as design goes, as you can see here, we have two cameras right on the very front which is really nice if you want to be able to actually see outside of your goggles. So when your goggles are actually set over your face, all you have to do is tap the right side, just right here. And once you tap it twice, you are now able to see out of those two front cameras without taking your goggles off. It gives you a really cool picture in picture view. So you are pretty much looking kind of through your goggles without taking them off. And the menu system now that you normally see is moved to the top left corner. Now pairing the goggles with the RC Motion 3, we now have a new cursor that comes up on screen. So if you are trying to go through your menu system, you can normally go through and do all of your changes here with the 5D button on the very top of your goggles. So if you're trying to change your menu, you would normally just kind of flick this joystick or the 5D around and change all of your settings. But now in the user interface on the goggles, you can actually use your RC Motion 3 as a cursor. So you can actually point the joystick around your screen while your goggles are on and you use this as an actual pointer instead of using the menu button here at the very top. Next we're talking about the all new RC controller. Now it looks pretty much identical to the Avada 1 remote control. As you can see here, we have the antenna that flips up. We don't have this big antenna here. It's all integrated on the very top of the remote controls. And when it comes to the look, feel, and button layout, we have pretty much all the same on the new remote compared to the previous one. All the buttons on the very front are the same. We have the C1 power button, uh, hook for your lanyard. On the very top, you have the record, start, stop. You have your ability to change the uh, modes as well as home, pause. The scroll wheel has changed from the silver one over into a black one on the new one. On the bottom, USB-C to update and charge your remote as well as the stick holders here on the inside. And of course, this is what you're gonna need to go full manual, full acro mode on the Avada 2 compared to what you're able to do here on the RC Motion. Next, I wanna jump over to the battery. Now, I did talk about the battery. I talked about the flight time. I love the fact that they went with this type of case as far as the hub goes compared to what we previously had here with the Avada 1. They went with a more enclosed case like they have on the Mini, the Air 3, so I really like these types of hubs. The one thing I do like about it is that they took this from the Air Hub, or the Air 3 Hub, which means if you have all three batteries right now, they are all, I ran them all the way down to about 15 to 20% or about, yeah, about 20% when it said that the battery was low. But what's great is that I do wanna get one more flight out of these things. So you can go onto the power button. Once all the batteries are in there, press the power button and then press and hold it. Once you do that, it'll turn green, just like that. Now what's gonna happen is that it's gonna take the batteries with the least amount of power and put that power over to the battery with the most amount of power. So ideally you want to move all of that energy into one battery now so it'll get me at least one more flight uh, up in the air without having to plug this into a power bank, without having to plug it into a wall outlet. I could probably get one more flight out of it by moving the energy from these two batteries over to the one that already has the most power. Also, we are able to use the USB-C port here to charge up the batteries, but not just that, you're able to use that as an output. So if you wanna charge up your goggles, charge up your phone, charge up a motion controller, all you do is plug in USB-C here to your device and you are now able to charge those devices off of these batteries. Now overall, super impressed of how refined, I would say, the Avada 2 is over the Avada 1. When it comes down to getting high quality Cinewhoop dynamic style footage, the Avada 2, just like the Avada 1, is super easy because of the way the ecosystem is with DJI. They make everything as simple as possible, plug and play, but of course with all of the DJI safety features that we're so used to on all of their other drones. Now when it comes down to available kits to purchase, there's actually gonna be three different options. This one right here is, I guess, a larger of the kits. So if you wanna get the Flymore combo, you can get this one right here. It comes with the Avada 2, the RC Motion 3, Goggles 3, and this right here, two extra batteries, so you get three total. You'll also get the charging hub, and you will get the sling bag and inside the sling bag comes with extra propellers, USB-C cable, 
adapter and things like that that you'll need. Next option you have is the single battery kit and that's gonna come with, of course, one battery in your drone, the Avada 2, RC Motion 3, and the Goggles 3. And finally, the last option will be buying the DJI Avada 2 separately standalone. Now, I don't know if it's gonna be released yet as a standalone. Like what I mentioned earlier, when it comes down to compatibilities with the previous remote control, motion, goggles, and things like that, I believe they're still going through that list. But the DJI Avada 2, ideally, will be sold separately in the future. Now, as far as other accessories to get, the remote control 3, it is a separate purchase. So if you are planning on flying with the remote control, and especially if you are a more advanced manual acro flyer, you're gonna wanna pick this one up, as well as this right here. If you wanna have a little bit more natural motion blur, especially when you're flying your drone really close to objects, really close to the ground, you want that natural motion blur. You're gonna need to adjust your exposure because of the fixed aperture. You'll need something like this, set of ND filters. And there it is guys, the new Avada 2. I just really scratched the surface on all of this new gear. Just wanted to highlight what are the new things coming out with this kit. As always, if you guys got some value from this video, a big like would be much appreciated. This is Ultra Stasio with flightpath.com. I'll see you guys out there with the Avada 2. Take care.